Welcome to the 2022 Antigua Forum hosted by the Universidad Francisco Marroquin here in Guatemala. Today we are with Don Dyer, an entrepreneur, community investor, and man of faith. He is the co-founder and CEO of Professional Janitorial Services. He's also deeply involved with education. Welcome, Don. Glad to be here. Well, Don, uh, as I mentioned, you are a co-founder of Professional Janitorial Services, founded in uh, 1986. While the company is the largest uh, privately owned cleaning company in Texas today, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the early days of starting it and the journey to where it is today? Yeah, we started in 1986. Uh, I actually was solo. I started it myself and I brought in a partner a year later. Um, but uh, I uh, had been in a previous business uh, when I was a graduate student and sold that business and started looking for other opportunities and um, was just exposed to the janitorial business and went to a convention in Chicago and went to a bunch of seminars and said, well, I think I can do this. So I moved to Austin and printed up some business cards and started walking up and down the street asking uh, if I could clean people's buildings. So uh, that was in 86, January 15, 1986. And uh, unfortunately, I did have to do a lot of the cleaning myself because people wouldn't show up. And uh, it was, uh, it was a trying first five or six years. I can, I can attest that it, uh, I wanted to quit a thousand times. Well, you didn't quit and, uh, and today uh, it still exists and uh, you have nearly 5,000 employees. Uh, what were some of the major milestones in getting to that point today? Probably the most major milestone was uh, we were invited to bid a facility. We were very small, clean small commercial buildings, branch banks, that kind of thing and a bid showed up in the mail to clean, to bid on Lockheed's Missiles in Space, who had a very large uh, footprint in Austin at the time, probably the largest in Austin. Um, and that was probably in 88, 89. And we had no business bidding it. It was, you know, two million square feet of industrial space, office space. They made smart bombs and all kinds of secret stuff. And, uh, but anyway, bid on it, made a presentation, and uh, for whatever reason, we were awarded the contract. And that was the largest contract available in Central Texas at the time. And so it immediately put us on the map to be a viable for any other big commercial projects. And that was, the, that was the tipping point, turning point of where we went from just struggling day to day, month to month to make a payroll to becoming uh, a legitimate, significant presence in the cleaning business. Uh, well, I know in total you've launched eight companies throughout your life. The first one when you were 23 years old. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the variety of fields your companies are in and that maybe other aspiring entrepreneurs might prepare for? Sure. First company I started was a uh, maintenance services company to smaller landlords, somebody who had 10 duplexes or small apartment complex that couldn't afford to have full-time staff, but um, would needed somebody other than calling a plumber to fix a sink. They needed a, a more, more uh, competitive price type service. So I started that while I was in graduate school in Dallas. Um, and that led into people needing window coverings. And so uh, I had a several apartment complexes that um, I would go get wholesale relationships and provide window coverings. And uh, that led to me going into the window covering business. And we, uh, that was my third year in graduate school. And uh, in two years, we went from not being in the window treatment business to being the largest distributor for level or blinds in the Southwest United States. And all we did was commercial projects. And at the time in the early eighties, Dallas was booming. Uh, they were building a building or apartment complex on every corner, so it was uh, it was kind of taking orders rather than having to really uh, work hard to do you know get business and uh, that exploded and that's the business I sold uh, and ended up going into the cleaning business and then we've also started a landscape business, a high rise window cleaning business, a uh, metal refinishing business, the cabs of elevators and es you know they have to be maintained and uh, also a commercial pressure washing business, which all those services we sell to the 
same customer base. The commercial facility manager, office manager has got to buy all those services. So we've leveraged off our relationship of the cleaning business to add on to all those ancillary businesses. So it's uh, been a fun run. So it sounds like listening to that, you uh, as you were doing your own entrepreneurial activity in, in each of those businesses, uh, you must have had an eye for seeing a need that, that you could provide for other people and, and fulfilling that need by uh, starting a new business. Yeah, it was definitely, uh, uh, you, want, you know, once you get momentum and start going, you start to see other opportunities and uh, the synergies of that, of, of having those businesses, that we still have the same one customer and we can sell them seven, seven things instead of just one. And uh, it uh, just was just kind of a natural progression of the growth of the business. The, uh, and we've gone into real estate as well. We tried to, we put our foot in the high tech business of creating a device that would monitor labor and their actions when they were doing tasks and give us feedback on how, how fast they were doing their work. The initial attempt was to give us feedback to monitor who our best workers were so we could pay them more because they were producing more. Um, but it became apparent that people didn't like wearing a device that reported back to us what they were doing. So it was had a tremendous resistance. So we just, we backed away from that business. So you're a business leader and uh, you've also managed to be very involved in your community and in the broader world of public policy and various education initiatives. Uh, how and why did you get involved with some of those initiatives? Well, the uh, school that uh, I, I got involved with was just out of necessity. My children were quite young. I didn't like the options that we had of the public school system. Uh, we were home, my wife was homeschooling our children at the time. And uh, we saw that that probably had a limited lifespan of her capacity. And so we started exploring school options and were exposed to a very creative school in Dallas. I went up and met with the uh, founder of that and the headmaster and uh, became quite uh, taken with what the program they had. So I basically said, would you come and help us start your kind of school in Austin? And we put together a board and uh, started raising some money and uh, decided to open a school in Austin that mimicked what they were doing up in Dallas. and. Uh, and now I think it's the largest private school in, in Austin. With, with given that, what in your view is uh, the proper role of education in a free society and how does uh, the Regents School in Austin uh, contribute to that? Well, Regents is exceptional at teaching their students how to think and how to question and how to process rather than giving them the answers, rather than giving them the solutions. They are very, uh, They've become very, very good at equipping kids to uh, think on their own, solve problems on their own. And I think that's the goal that you want to see of education. You're equipping someone who's capable to go out in the world and make evaluations, make assessments, have questions, and understand that, that uh, they don't need to be handed the solutions. They can create the solutions. Well, Don, it's been a real pleasure uh, speaking with you today. and. Uh, it's been great having you here at the Antigua Forum, your first one, and we look forward to hopefully having you back soon. Well, it's been a very great privilege for me. Thanks for having me.